Our scripture this morning is from Ephesians 5, 15 to 20. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the Lord add his blessing to our understanding of his word. Praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. What a joy to see everybody this morning. God bless you, Brother Bush, back with us. Praise God. And uh, our visitors, I ask all our visitors to stand. Uh, not name you one by one, but I want to thank you uh, for being with us uh, today, especially those that have come with Reverend Brenda. Thank you. Welcome. Amen. And we especially want to welcome again uh, my friend, Reverend Brenda Cardwell. We knew each other even before she came to the Capital area 35 years ago. So it's been a long friendship. And uh, we just thank God for the work she has done with children in the Capital area over all those years from the children's choir that Pilgrimage had for many years to this baptism today. And, just thank God for her witness. Also, it's a baptism Sunday. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I am so excited. I could hardly go to sleep last night. It's been a long time since I have baptized anybody. <laughs> I was out of Michigan Park for 14 years and getting used to the logistics here, but it's been fun. It's been exciting. It's nice to do something different, isn't it? and especially something so significant and meaningful as baptism. It is wonderful. I want to thank Brother Warren, who has put in a lot of hours making this possible. Reverend McNeil will be in the water with me. Thank Dr. Goins for carrying most of the service today. So it takes a team of people, amen. Thank God for the Bethany team, amen. Team Bethany, today is Super Bowl Sunday. So we've got, you know, Eagles, and we got the Chiefs team, but we got Bethany team, amen. So all praise be to God. This scripture in Ephesians 5 uh, captures my attention for the sermon today. I'll just reread verse 17. Ephesians 5 and 17 says, So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. My title, be open-hearted, open-minded, and open-handed. The times are evil, our hearts are deceitful, our minds are a battleground, and our hands are prone to mischief, amen. We are Christian believers, and our salvation is secure, but life is messy. I heard someone say something I like this week. Life is not a bumper sticker. <laughs> Life is not a bumper sticker. And Jesus said, not all that call me Lord will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. Grace is free, yes, but grace is not cheap. There are requirements and behavior counts. We all will stand at the judgment seat. Now, this is not to scare you, but to remind you of the warnings of the epistles to live a life worthy of the calling in Christ Jesus. Live in Christ and walk in the Spirit. What does that mean? Sometimes it's hard to figure out. Amen. But that's why we're here this morning, right? Openness to the Holy Spirit means we're open-hearted, we're open-minded, and we're open-handed. In the latter portion of Ephesians, the writer begins enumerating 
the ways and means that Christians will walk worthy of the calling in Christ Jesus. The environment in which these believers believed was enough for concern. For Ephesus was a thriving city on the crossroads of a cultural superhighway, just like the United States is. It drew people from all over the world. There were competing mystery religions practiced there that put new Christian believers at risk. Therefore, verse 15 says, be careful how you live in this environment, in this melting pot. The foolishness of the Ephesians appears to be related to the attempt to gain easy access to the divine. It seems verse 18 is referring to drunken festivals frequented by those who worship Dionysus where people would lose themselves, become wild and frenzied. And only in this uninhibited state did the Dionysians believe that you could receive revelations from God. But recalling Romans 14 and 17, the Ephesians are asked to be filled with the spirit instead, not filled with the wine of the Dionysians, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Baptism Sunday is a perfect time to renew our baptism vows. That is, if you made any vows, some people were so young they don't remember. They remember being dunked in the water, amen? We all remember that part. But what did you promise God at that time? What vow did you make unto the Lord? Did you promise him you would live a Christian life? Did you promise him you would walk in the way of Christ? We all made some kind of promise. I know I was 13, I made a promise that I would follow him all the way to the end. Or any promises you have made since, because we don't get baptized over and over, again, over and over again, but we do renew our faith. We do rededicate ourselves. And so as we've grown in the Lord, we've made all kind of promises. Raise your hand if you promise God anything. Amen. You've made a promise to God. And so when we watch this baptism today, it's time for us to think about those promises that we have made unto God. Yes. To walk in his way. And there are many ways I can remind you of your covenant with God to keep his commands, to do his will, to understand his will. You have to understand it before you can do it. Right? But I have chosen just three things to think about this morning. First, be open-hearted. Instead of pouring wine down their throats, the Ephesians are urged to let God's spirit pour into their hearts with music. David, this is your day. It says, because why, how do we receive God's revelation? How do we, you know, get that same euphoria that the Dionysus were getting, he said, it's through music. And I know music has been a very important part of my life from a child. I learned the faith on so many of those great songs of the church, and music takes me out of one level of consciousness to another level of consciousness. Always there was a song in the background in the story of my life. There's a soundtrack. I like that. There's a soundtrack to the story of my life, amen, always. My mother used to say, I can always hear you before I see you because I hear you singing. We are flexible, and we just roll with what's going on. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, so it says the way, what we do in contrast to what the Ephesians, some of them were doing is we sing. 
we sing. And, and we sing all kinds of music. I like this, different types of music. Watch this, Psalms. The Psalms are the Hebrew scripture, and you know they are to be sung. They were originally sung, not spoken. Hymns. Those are especially written for Christians uh, and praise of Jesus Christ as Lord. And then finally, spiritual songs, which we believe were the spontaneous songs that people would burst into song when they were in the spirit. It takes all different kind of music so that everybody can get happy. One of the things that Michigan Park will tell you when I went there in 1985, uh, I taught him it was all right to get happy. It was all right to shout. <laughs> because this is, a, this is our heritage. This is our legacy. This is how we express our joy to God. And often it is accompanied by music. We feel happy. We feel content. We feel joyful in the Lord. It is the outpouring of the spirit-filled Christian, tunefully, tunefully, is to be not just on festival days like Christmas and Easter, but it's to be not just on Sunday, and we do enjoy all the music, great music here is Bethany, but it's supposed to be every day, every day. I like the song that says, without a song, the day will never end. Without a song, the road would never bend. Hallelujah. To be open-hearted to the joy of this singing, it's not sappy and sentimental. The Psalms, think of it, they confront God with genuine human feelings, fear, anger, loss, misery, hope, love, our dreams are all embedded in our songs. The Psalmists poured out their hearts to God, welcoming then the healing, healing presence, the soothing presence of the Holy Spirit into their souls while making melody wear in their hearts. We need an open heart to receive today. Secondly, be open-minded. Now, open-minded does not mean empty-minded. Amen. <laughs> but we're looking for wisdom. We're looking for wisdom, the wisdom of Christ. I want to thank uh, Sister Susan for, you know, all the work she does on our sign outside. And, you know, it's always hard to watch that scrolling as you're driving. <laughs> But as I was coming around the driveway, it talked about the wisdom, getting the wisdom of God. I did get that, Susan. Thank you. The wisdom of Christ calls us to grow quiet and contemplate new possibilities of how we can communicate to God. We're now in Bible study, and we're studying. Sister Becky does a great job. Shout out to her and Zoom, and all of you that are on Zoom and Facebook. Hallelujah but we're talking about living a life of prayer. That's constant communication with God, praying without ceasing, so that we can understand how not to be foolish. You know, Elder Burgess, he always says, God, I don't wanna look like a fool or sound like a fool up here, he always says that. And I don't either, I don't ever want to be foolish. I always said to my students, an educated person knows how to be appropriate in every situation. That's the mark of the educated person, how to do what's appropriate in the situation they found themselves in, because none of us want to be foolish. So it is through our minds that God teaches us and speaks to us. With an open mind, we set our goals and our visions, um, and we understand when our mind is open, we can do things we never thought we could do. When you have open mind, you can do more. Uh, you can have a global agenda. You don't live in a cave. You don't live in just your uh, uh, a small circle of influence, but you understand. An open mind means you look at the whole world. You embrace so many different things. Open mind. You know, it's terrible when a person has a closed mind. You just can't get very far. <laughs> you just can't get, it, get very far with the person when they have a closed mind. They believe one thing and that's it. <laughs> and you keep running into a dead end with them. But when you have an open mind, 
you're able to just explore the world, explore ideas, explore possibilities, have visions, have dreams. That's what open mind means, that I'm open to receive what is new, that what is doesn't have to be, amen? That there is alternative reality because my mind is open to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, if it's closed, the Holy Spirit can't get in, amen? But if it's open, we said, you are welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. I think about this. In the early days of building great cathedrals, the master builder and the stonemasons, they had to have an open mind in order to see what their completed work would look like. Because you see, they would never finish a building in one generation. Without machinery, the stones had to be cut by hand. And, 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 you know, come on, the, the, the stones had to be hauled on their backs. Think of building those pyramids, how long it took those Africans to build those pyramids. It took a long time, and sometime a great cathedral would span three and four master builders. In other words, one person would start, but they couldn't ever see it completed, but in their mind they could. You know how we say, in my mind's eye? In my mind's eye, I have an idea of what it's going to look like as a finished product. Amen. And so that's what it means to have an open mind, to see the vision of how the, all the tiny pieces are going to finally all come together to form that finished project. Praise God. An open mind invites God's spirit in and gives us a glimpse of the mansion that God wants to build for all his people everywhere. Even if it is God's intention, we spend our entire lives creating just one brick. Whatever assignment God has given me, but I see beyond that assignment. I'm not just working on this brick. I'm working on a mansion. I'm working on a cathedral. I'm working on a building. I'm just a small part of a great, large enterprise. And you must understand that as a Christian. I often say to people, you know, you don't have to have the lead role. You don't have to have a major role. But the story can't happen without you, you doing your part. God assigns all of us a part to do no matter how, if you consider it great or small, because in the eyes of God, it might be great. You think it's small, but it can be great what you're doing. But you do have to kind of understand how it gets all connected together. And then when it comes together, my, my, my. What a great cre creation it will be. That artist, you know, who takes the first stroke on that canvas or that sculptor that just puts their hands on the clay and, but they, ha they see something, they see something greater than what is there now. And so we all today, let us see something greater than what is in front of us. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Don't look at what is in front of you now, but see the greater. See that what is more. See what is much more that is coming. And you're just one little cog, but Lord, help me to do my part. Hold up my end. Amen. So that when we all get together, what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. Hallelujah. Open-minded. And then third, be open-handed. I'm not going to stay too long on this point because I preached on service last week, but it's still important to mention it. The thankfulness we feel and proclaim for everything that God has done for us, it has to be activated in our lives. We have to respond with action. The key word here is actions. We talked today about, you know, kindness, small acts of kindness. That's become very popular in our culture and everybody's trying to figure out a way how to do small acts of kindness. It's like the Boy Scouts to do a good deed every day to figure out how, God, now how am I going to serve you today? What am I going to do today to make somebody's life better? God, you know, I'm looking for that opportunity. I never know when it's going to come up. You know, it's so amazing how we can bless other people. We don't even plan to do it. I had done a funeral on Friday, and um, there was Reverend Dr. Betty Short at Michigan Park, and uh, I had not been able to go to her 80th birthday celebration, but I had said to someone, I'll find a time and I'll take her to celebrate. And so what better time than right then? 
to say, we're going to go celebrate your 80th birthday today. Amen. Whatever it is, whatever your gift is to share with others. You see, knowing that God is in charge, we're not worried about our bottom line. Amen? We're not worried about material things, right? Right? We don't have to hedge our bets. And I like this. We don't have to ration our compassion. Can I say there a minute? There is no limit to compassion. You can be nice to everybody. It's not going to run out. It's not scarce. It's a flow. It's like a stream, a ever stream that ever flows. The more you give, the more you can give. The more you're kind, the greater God increases your capacity to be kind. And so be open-handed. And, and as we say, when you give, it comes back to you. Press down and run it over, amen? Cast your bread on the water, it will come back tenfold, a hundredfold. I'm mighty glad about it, and I'm a witness to it. We can be generous in what we give. Once we quiet our fears and frustrations, once we successfully squelch the illusion that we have to be in control all the time, God's Spirit will show us just how simple it is to open our hands to help someone in need. A, hope, a open hand speaks louder than an open mouth. Amen? We can talk the talk, but can we walk the walk? Amen? But to be open-handed is to give ourselves, our time, our treasure, our talent to those within our reach and far beyond. You just never know. As I end, I remember Dean Larry Jones at Howard Divinity saying once, when I died, put on my headstone, I tried. It stuck with me. I like that because I always want to be able to say I tried my best to be open-hearted, to be open-minded, and to be open-handed. I tried to understand God's word and live by it. I tried to understand God's will for my life. As Martin Luther King said, we can, all can say this together, I tried to help somebody. I tried to love my neighbor as myself. I tried to be faithful to the vision God showed me. I tried to be a witness to God's grace in the world. I tried to receive the fruits of the Spirit and I tried to put on the whole armor of God every day. I tried to plant seeds of kindness. I tried to be a change agent, a reconciler, a mediator of conflict. Lord knows I tried. I tried to praise and worship the living God in the spirit, full of enthusiasm and with a certain assurance of grace. Hallelujah. I tried to deepen my faith. I could go on and on. But just suffice it to say, I opened my heart I opened my mind, and I opened my hands. Yes, I offered them up to God, and I said, here's my heart, Lord, cleanse it. Here's my mind, instruct it. And God is speaking somewhere in the back. <laughs> I like it when God responds to me, amen. <laughs> I said, open my heart, open my mind, Open my hands, use them to your glory. Or I like Micah Stampley a lot. He's a gospel singer, and he has a song I love. And he says, Lord, take my heart, mold it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it. Then he said, to yours, to yours, to yours, O Lord. And always remember that if at the end of your life you earnestly tried and you failed in your trying, the old song said, Jesus will run quickly to meet you. And he'll say, well done. He'll understand. If you tried, he'll understand. If you did your best, now don't come in half-stepping. Don't come in mediocre. Amen? But if you did your best at all times, God deserves an A every time, A effort, A effort, amen, he'll understand. He makes up the difference, and he'll say, well done. When you slip, all you got to do is repent. 
See, believers don't seek forgiveness. I mean, unbelievers, that's the difference between unbelievers and believers. Now, this is what baptism is all about. Today, these children are becoming part of the believers. Believers seek forgiveness. Unbelievers do not. Amen? They do not. But we are believers, and we seek. And then another thing, we receive the Holy Spirit at our baptism. That's an important point to make on a day like this. You are to receive the Holy Spirit when you are baptized. You receive it. But you are to also seek further the filling of the Holy Spirit. It's one thing to receive it, but it's something else to be full of it. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is different from to receive it. All believers receive it, all re receivers have it, but not all believers have been filled. And we have to be filled and refilled to what? Walk the walk. To do what God is calling us to do, to have the power, the power to fulfill the vision that God has given us. To take up our cross daily and follow Jesus, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because remember, there are two books in heaven. One is the book of life. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Confess with your mouth, you know, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's the book of life. Your name is written there. And be baptized. Amen. You need to be baptized to be in this great, this great congregation of believers. To be called a believer, you have to be baptized. That puts your name in the book of life, but there's another book too. It's called the book of deeds. And in that book are all the things we ever did, everything we ever did. We will have, a, have to give an account for that, the efforts we made to live in Christ and do what? Walk in the spirit. So today as these young people are baptized, I'm calling you to be a living epistle. What, uh, what does that mean, to be a living example for them? To be careful how you live, that's what it's saying. Be careful how you live. Frank Sinatra sang the song, and now the end is near. <laughs> I wish I could sing. <laughs> and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway and more, much more than this. What do you say? I did it my way. I did it my way. No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> Rather, more, much more than this. Hallelujah. I did it God's way. I did it God's way. More, much more than this. I did it God's way. So be open-hearted, be open-minded, be open-handed, and if you do, one day you will hear those great words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let's give God a hand for the word.